All right, so here we are, uh, just getting ready to start um, a few days before the Toyota series on uh, the Harris chain, 2021. And my buddy Rick has left his boat with me for safekeeping. And what he doesn't know is I'm gonna do a little bit of work for him, get it uh, in good running order. Um, so, I previous video I had mentioned a couple of things, uh, one of which is this little uh, door that comes off here. And there's a couple of spots for water filters in this uh, Mercury 250 Pro XS, uh, the four stroke. And this is one of them. We push this blue thing down, this pops off. There's a stem in there that comes out. And the other one is here. And there is, uh, this will unscrew. The easier way to get it out is to take that bolt off there and pull this out and clean that screen. These are both screens. They're easy to do from the top side. Uh, I've seen another video that exists. And the problem I had when I was fishing on Toho, the first uh, tournament of the year, was that my, there's three filters. This is uh, one, two, here um, and then the third one lives down inside here it's not the easiest thing to get to um, I haven't seen a video yet that shows how to get to it so today I'm gonna show you here we go there are a few bolt holes uh, here here bolts that have to come out all around this side of the mid shaft, the cowling um, up front, and you'll just have to follow them around to find them. And the ones that are really make you question your religion are these that are in here. There's one here, and there's one down in there, uh, which we'll get to. And as well across the back, there is. Um, one up top here, down in here, and there's one below it, which you can hardly see, which I'm gonna use a couple of swivels and some quarter inch drives to get to, hopefully a lot easier than what uh, happened to me. My buddy Adam Taylor was with me, um, just kind of doing a little riding around with me, and we spent from about one o'clock till five o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday, not on the water, getting to this filter and what it did was uh, it would allow you to get up to maybe about 35 40 miles an hour just on pad and then it would overheat if you will and put you in limp mode and you wouldn't be able to to go to go anywhere at that point in time and uh, we're going to show you how to how to how to get around that without having to take it into the shop and just be able to do it. I mean we did it on the trailer we cheated it out of there cleaned it up had a bunch of grass and stuff covering that filter in the mid shaft down here on the other side. And um, that's, you know, 99% of the time when that's happening. And these two filters are clear and clean. This one that lies underneath here and this one in here, when those are clean, it's this one down here that's clogged up uh, that's causing that problem. So, I'll shit and talk as I go. So um, this is, I'm using an eight millimeter on just a ratchet drive because it's a whole lot simpler situation than what I had to use uh, when I was down in Toho. We used a quarter inch drive and a quarter inch ratchet. We're already about 30 minutes ahead of what we had to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a kind of a little cheat schematic over here of where these bolts go, just in relation to where they came out of. Some of them are different sizes, case in point. So I started at the bottom here, and then that was the next one up and the next one up. See this one's even 
a different size from the rest of them. They couldn't keep it all the same size. I had to switch them around. A lot that Mercury did with this that was amazing. And a lot of things that they did that really make you scratch your head as to why engineers make so much money. say that paying attention to these bolts will save you a lot of headache in the end. And these are the, like I said, the easy ones that come out. The more difficult ones are definitely yet to come. switch to some swivel all right I talk about these uh, water filters that are on these things these screens I guess it, it moreover what they are there's a, a blue tab here um, pretty much anything of color on these motors I like to say if it has a, a, a color to it it's movable for some sort of maintenance issue um, you push this in here and you pull up on on this okay and that's going to pull out this screen here and you can see that this screen here has gotten already, and I've, I've cleaned this out once already um, before the uh, last couple of days of, of Rick's tournament here. But we're gonna clean that out, and we're gonna put that back in there. But that's what's hanging out in that thing. It's, you know, it's impeding the flow of water. The next thing we're gonna do before we get done with that is we're gonna take this one out, which is right here. Not horrible to get to. You can actually just unscrew that, but I like to take this thing completely off. And you can then see I don't have a pair of uh, pliers to get that out, but it already has some, some crud right there. I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers just here real quick. garbage hanging around it there's two holes in here there's one hole that goes through here and here and they connect those holes need to be clear so that this thing can have water flow the way that it needs to I'm gonna clean that hole out there I'm gonna clean this hole out here I'm gonna get this all put back together Rick will be quite happy when he goes and runs his boat when he comes back down here here we go all right so once it's all cleaned out here just as easy as screwing it back in until it's nice and tight. And we just replace our bolt up here. this screen out put it right back in all right so this screen's been cleaned up um, I will say I was talking to my pal Daryl Davis and walking him through this process because I had done it before he said that there was a um, 
bolt on the top of this particular piece. Now I haven't seen one like that. I don't get to play with the brand new stuff like he does. I usually get second year stuff and or antiquated, not the up to date. But in any event. All right, so what I've figured out is right here, and there is another that is all the way down here, and we'll get to that one in a minute. But a couple of quarter inch drive and a swivel, and you can more easily reach this. Trust me, my buddy Adam Taylor, when we were with me, that one right there probably took a solid 30 minutes to get into, and it was no fun. We had no alcohol, it was a bad day. Same situation. This is something that we didn't have with us and I won't go anywhere without it anymore. believer in a product called Corrosion X. Um, a buddy of mine that deals with boats has worked on them his whole life. Uh, had mentioned it to me at some point in time and it, it makes everything work better. I, I'm absolutely convinced you could put it on ice cream and make it taste better. But this is almost a perfect example of a couple of things. Number one, I'm, I'm at my dad's place out here at the Citrus Grove where most things are in disrepair. And this is a, a, just a little grabber that I want to use. And it, it's sticking, you know, it's not really working that well. And what I'm going to show you is in real time why I believe in and love Corrosion X. It doesn't take too much. And it's almost back to normal. Everything's working perfect on it with just a small spray. It doesn't have a horrible smell like some of the other products do. Um, I always keep a can of this with me when I'm traveling, no matter where I'm going. Um, I offer it to any of my buddies when they need a little a squirt of something. I use it on my, my hitch ball um, to keep it, you know, where it pops up off the hitch easy or off the ball easy. Um, any moving parts that are metal that get water on them, I use them. I use them on my gig boat. Uh, spray just about everything down with it. It's great for electronics. Um, any corrosion that you might get um, in your electronics, uh, it, it's safe for electronics. It's wonderful. Um, and, and just like that, something that was just about froze up and didn't work anymore is now just with a, a quick squirt working perfectly. You can reach in and grab the bolt you need and pull it right back out. So the one thing that I had uh, figured and learned is that there is a seal that goes around this mid shaft uh, cowling um, at the bottom of the engine pan, if you will. And it's very difficult to get off. You gotta pull it quite religiously for that to come off. Now, what we're looking for here, I'll let that sit just a second. And this rascal right here, that's the dude that can cause you problems. We got two bolts right here that need to come out and then we'll take a look at what the inside of it looks like. In just a second. Now, 
If there's anything that's not supposed to be here, you'll know right away. And there it is. Look at that, folks. All this crap is clogging up this filter. You see all that? That's what has to be cleaned out of here for this thing to breathe like it's supposed to with the water. I'm gonna take this off. It's just got a couple zip ties. I'm gonna take it off and we're gonna clean this back out. Nasty nonsense. And we're gonna put it back together. And my 17th best friend, Rick Taylor, is gonna be a happy fellow. Right, so I'm just gonna break these zip ties off. Number one, number two. Remember the direction that these lines go. I'm gonna go rinse this off, all this nastiness. And you see these holes here. See where those holes are. They're all just absolutely clogged up with, with junk. And I'm gonna go clean all this out. And I'll show you a video of it before I put it back in. How much better it's gonna look and how much better the water can move through that, through that filter. So I'm just gonna wipe this down. Wanna make sure that it has a good seal on that gasket. This is how it this is how it goes. You can see the difference now. You see all the holes for the uh, water filter there that catch. And they're all nice and open and before it looked like what Lake George used to look like when it had eelgrass on it long before FWC started killing it all off. Just put this back together. All right. Wear me a couple of zip ties on it. Because that's a approved tightening method. I don't know if y'all knew this or not, but pliers have a little spot to cut with right there. It's absolutely just perfect to cut zip ties with. All right, we'll get those bolts put back in there as soon as I find them. story is have yourself a swivel and a couple of quarter inch drive extensions to be able to reach um, those force bolts that are in the uh, upper cowling here in the mid shaft. Those do not come out well with just a small extension. All right. Get my socket back. Everything else is good to go. Let's take a little bit of lining up. Get in the right spot. Make sure you don't have any wires hanging out of them. Take a little bit of pressure. Same way. 
way they came out. Show you what it looks like at the end. So, everything's back together, uh, the mid shaft's uh, screen was cleaned, um, like I said, it's the mid shaft screen, uh, this screen here, if you push this blue button, pull this up, and there's a little rod in there that needs to be pulled up, and then this one, there's two ways to get it off, you can either unscrew this, or you can take out this 8 millimeter bolt here, and uh, unscrew this. I had, <laughs> in the gas station parking lot, um, done both of these for my buddy Rick, um, but what I didn't have a chance to do or time to do because it does take a minute is the mid shaft. Um, he had been having problems with some low water pressure. He'd been having problems with some um, alarms uh, going off and putting him in limp mode. Kind of same problem I had. Um, my pal Adam Taylor and I, uh, we got off the water down in Toho at 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Uh, the service trailers weren't there yet for Mercury and um, you know, we did some YouTube and some, some Googling, um, called Holden, talked to my bride, had her do some looking online. She couldn't find anything. We really just found that there was really nothing out there to explain where this other um, screen was at, other than uh, one individual that had done a video and explained these two. And then in a comment on his video, somebody said, yeah, you showed them where the two easy screens were to get to, which led us to understand there was a third. So I thought I'd put something out there and just let everybody know that there is a third. It's not horrible to get to, but uh, let me reach and grab this. Um, you don't necessarily have to have the drill, but what is important is the swivel. Um, we had just a small set of um, sockets and ratchets with us, um, but what we didn't have was a swivel and the extensions, which would have made this job much easier. Uh, literally a 20 minute job if you've got the right equipment and if you don't we, we were got off the water at one and we didn't get back on the water until five o'clock that day we lost a few hours of practice so um, something to think about is keep these wood keep these with you maybe look at this uh, especially when you're in some shallow water it's going to pick up some grass and it's really going to stick to that screen it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to disintegrate uh, rick's boat's been with me for maybe about a month now and that grass that was on that screen was still very moist, very wet. It's not going to dry up and go away in, in just a few weeks. So uh, definitely something that periodically you need to know where it's at, how to get to it. It's, it's serviceable. You can do it. You don't have to take it into your dealer to get it done. Um, and not everybody obviously knows about it because there's not a lot of videos out there. This one will be. So I appreciate you watching the video. Um, you know, subscribe to Riddling Fishing. I'm gonna continue to put out some videos just with some helpful tips and tricks and things that I find along the way in my journey to fishing the tour. See you soon.